Time and space clearly don't play by our rules in Signalis. With armor we obtain from ourselves and have never received prior, or doors that lead to rooms in impossible ways, it isn't hard to see the edges of reality begin to distort. Today we will find no concrete answers, rather we will begin to unfold the complexity of the lore and attempt to understand just how little we truly understand. So with no more delay, let's just get right into this. To start, we should kill time and space. Starting with time, there are plenty of examples within the game that give ample arguments as to the death of time. The example I used in the intro is the most glaring. How can we acquire something from a dead body that later becomes our own? But it goes beyond just this. One look into Adler's manic rants and we find that he too reports a distortion of time, a day that repeats into infinity, a cycle that bends time's forward momentum. Or if those don't work to prove time's demise, then one could look to how the game's save system works, where when a player dies, their death is used as part of calculating an ending. So while the progress is lost, the event still clearly affected reality. Yet, was it not lost to time? Also, before anyone in the comment goes, well, time is constant, another Elster arrives to replace the fallen one. I agree with that take. I think there's lots of evidence to prove that a different Elster is arriving. However, why is it that every puzzle is undone or every enemy we kill is returned? That could just be chalked up the gameplay, but I do think it is somewhat of a argument to be made when it's combined with other examples of time dying that we can solidly state that time itself is dead in this game. I guess it's time to kill space now. Nowhere is the best example as it clearly displays non-Euclidean geometry and having no problem showcasing Elster entering doors and exiting in ways that are simply not possible, but there are other examples. One can look to the descent from re-education to rot front that despite the fact we fell in a hole, we emerge in a spot where the place above us is covered in mesh that offers no clear way where we could have entered. Or the fact that one reaches the pure bottom of Sapienst, they emerge on what could be seen as a surface. Or in the event that the butterflies, they transfer items across vast instances with unlimited inventory space, regardless which piece is needed to convince you, to me at least, and hopefully to you, it should be evident that both time and space are truly dead. But are they? Throwing you for a loop halfway through the video, a key reminder that I started this out with a disclaimer that only questions will result from this video, and I have no idea how to get you any answers. To begin, we must revive space. And to do that, well, we have the beginning of the game, and naturally the majority of the game. It is factual that as we progress through the game, the world generally follows Euclidean rules. Aside from nowhere, all doors go where they state. All rooms are properly spaced so that way they can actually fit in the room that's allocated. Maps work. Holes from above do drop to below in what should be below. That's Euclidean geometry. I mean, it goes even beyond that with things being properly sized, you know. You enter doorways that are doorway shaped. So, Sapienst generally follows Euclidean rules. And following nowhere, so does Rotfront. This one's pretty important to me. Nowhere introduced self-referential doors, doors that lead into themselves and break Euclidean geometry. Yet these doors don't appear at all in Rotfront. Instead, freshy growths impede progress. They already had the code. The devs had the code to make doors that lead nowhere. Doors that just are wonky and are self-referential. But instead, the devs decided to show us physical space-based existence of flesh to stop us. Proof that something, at least physically, is going on here. What about time? Well, this one might seem stupid, but does the game physically progress? Don't click off. Please hear me out. Elster does complete puzzles. She does kill enemies. Hell, if she uses thermites, those enemies stay dead. Elster takes damage and has to heal. She completes puzzles and eventually she gets either deeper into Sapiens or closer to unlocking a door. Time still moves forward, at least in a way. It's, it's not moving forward correctly at all times in the game, but it certainly is moving forward. So, time is dead, space is dead, but time is alive and space is alive. Well, yeah, I did warn that only questions would result here, but there's actually something we can do with this newfound, I guess, knowledge. And while I think dream theories are cool and they definitely uh, tie in a lot here, it isn't that. Let's start with time. And with a character who is rather important to the plot, but is seemingly not understood at all right now. Issa Ida. Issa is complicated. 
On one hand, she is shown to have cut her hand and done a ritual similar to the Lily ending during the fake-out ending. She is also seen traveling alongside Elster, yet in the end of the game, it's revealed she died in Rotfront, likely long before the events of the game. So, what happened? Well, if we accept that time is dead, perhaps we can find something of a start to an answer. Or at least here's a theory we can propose. Issa got her hand on the King of Yellow while it was in her store, likely the same way that Arianne first saw it. Connecting with the book, she could have learned the Blood Witch Rule, and following it, she found herself in Sipiensk, and thus, in the events of the game. Since time is dead, it matters not how far into the future these events happen. It could be billions of years. Time is dead, so she is able to be there. And with this, we can also try and explain Issa's death. With A, her disappearance from reality led her family to believe she was dead, or B, her death at the end of the game, because when she dies here, she dies and cannot return to reality, or, you know, where she's supposed to be, and thus dies in reality, allowing her to see her own grave. A reminder, time is dead, but time is alive. Events are events, and they seem to occur regardless in situations where time is distorted. So because time and space are both dead and alive at the same time, Issa can get removed from her original time, die, and the reason for her decay into madness, or her loss to the flesh virus, can be her own death. She can also be removed completely from the events of her homeworld to Sipiensk, perfectly logically, because space isn't real. Regardless what it is, I think we should consider arguments where time is dead, as I believe we, by doing so, we can get closer to an actual answer. Next, we have space, though. If space is dead, we can kind of try and uh, come up with a solution here as to what is going on with Leng, Arianne, and the Penrose. To begin, we know the Penrose blasts itself into the Oort Cloud at least a minimum of a hundred, or if not thousand, cycles ago. So, how did it land on Leng, a moon within the same solar system? Well, space is dead. The ship could land anywhere, as long as non-Euclidean geometry is a situation occurring. And as such, the landing on Lang is fully possible. But the fact that the ship is physically landing is showing that at the very least, you know, the ship has to undergo the basic process of undergoing a landing. So it's still following some levels of Euclidean geometry, at the very least, you know, doing something physical such as touching down, but it's not following physical or any Euclidean rules at all while traveling through space. Now, it is very easy to chalk this all up to a dream, seeing as in reality, really only in dreams, do we see non-Euclidean space and time. There is no other real examples in the real world. However, it's important to note that if a being held the power to distort reality, or if it was a being that's beyond the traditional understanding of dimensions, something in the fourth dimension, like many cosmic horror creatures, or the king in yellow. There is no reason to believe that any components of reality, space and time, would hold any level of consistency. And in fact, it's heavily established throughout both cosmic horror and the king in yellow itself that space and time begin to adopt non-Euclidean properties. Regardless of what you believe, though, dream, no dream, space and time, king in yellow, I hope this opened up some avenues for discussion, or at the very least was interesting to you guys. I, as I said in the start of this, I don't have any answers here. I think this is something I just want to see more conversation about. This has been Crystal Beast, and I hope to see you all next time.